this guy? I was just checking out this dude. Somewhere. North Dakota Supreme Court, not Eric's dad. Yeah, and the lady said, well, that's what the policy is going to come with. I'm going to try to change that here real quick, too. Yeah. We need to be politicians. <laughs> Run for office with your party. But, yes. but if you're a politician, you can't get people like this. No, just the people would do that. Yeah. Just the little puppets over there. <laughs> That's what they do, right? That's the beautiful beauty of being a civil path. You can be anything that's a good condition. Well, that's like private attorney or private attorney yeah. general. by the Martin County Sheriff that I should talk to, we should talk to the Attorney General if you want to change the law. Um, would Civil rights violations would be considered. Also, I was wondering if um, we were told that the Morton County Sheriff's um, that we wanted to f talk with the Internal Affairs Department and they said they didn't have one and we asked to get a complaint form to file against an officer for violating civil rights. And he said to talk to the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Is that right? So well, initially, you, initially, initially the state attorney well, had she knows. said, no, well, not the state attorney, the sheriff had said that they don't have an internal affairs. And, yeah, and then he said, I need to talk to the state attorney. Only the state attorney is here. And the lady that was there didn't want to share with us the location of his office. There's actually, there's the attorney general, which is this office. There's also the office. Yeah. Anything with the title state's attorneys is going to be county level government, not state level. Mm. So there are two separate things. But when you have a complaint against an officer, your formal complaint has to be filed directly with the sheriff. You can just type up a letter and send it to them, anything, and at that point it's his responsibility to then make sure he gives it to whatever agency he needs to get to be do investigated. That? And that's something that can be taken higher, but that's the first step you've got to take. I did that already. We can give a letter to the, to the sheriff's I department. I did. I sent it to, uh, I sent, I sent it to Veronica. It's got to be addressed directly to the elected sheriff himself. Oh. And they told us that they're not required to give us their name and badge number, and they had it hidden. That I so, we don't have jurisdiction over yeah. any law enforcement agency at all. So who would be above the sheriff? Well, the sheriff is a part, an elected official, so technically there's no one above him. Board of directors. If you have a major complaint, you can always try the governor's office. That's right, Thanks. But, yeah, we don't have jurisdiction over them, so we can't take complaints to So us. what do we do with, what does this attorney general do? The attorney general, our office is the attorneys that represent the state government officials. We don't have jurisdiction over any. We just represent the state as the attorneys. That's it. Mm. We're not bosses over anybody else or anything like that. Mm. Thank you. No problem. Um, you have a tort form? Well, they wouldn't have it here because oh, we would be here, filing yeah, a tort on the that be on the county. Yeah, we already got all that. It's the statutes. Oh. Okay, thank you. Nikki Trey. Trey Hoos. Good to see you. Good to see you. You, got, you guys doing anything? Is that the, you or the state attorney general? I mean, sorry, well, attorney general. Yeah, cool. Are you guys doing anything relating to the people over at the camp? No, no? we're not involved in it. All we are is the attorneys that represent, like, the Department of Labor and Department of Health. Department of the Army. Have, yeah, we don't. Do you have a brochure on the attorney general? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. No, we'll look it up. Again. We can find it. I Google I'm has a it. Google it's nerd. really easy, just Attorney General Doug and D. Okay, cool. We'll Thanks. go over to the governor's office. Appreciate it. You too. Let's see if we can try to see if they can. Can you make it Yep, I have it. So, so that's the thing. Hello. How are you? Pretty happy. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm the exhausted side of fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. This is a nice house. It's, it's a great place to be. Yeah. How, how can we help you? Um, we were wondering about getting a law change, and also, that's all. 
Well, okay. the law changes with the legislature. That's but what but let's let it by him. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the way that it works in North Dakota and the statutory limitations on, on the governor in terms of what he can and can't comment on, uh, he can't comment on legislation until it's been introduced um, or threaten to veto it. So your best bet would be if you head straight down the hallway, uh, on your left is going to be the House chambers, and on the right is the Senate chambers. Uh, you should be able to find both minority and majority leadership in their offices, uh, and you can request to uh, connect with, with a representative as it relates to, or your district representative, are you both, or one of you from North Dakota? Yeah, we're, we're both from North Dakota. I'm we're not actually, from Well, no, we're not from here, but we're living here now. Which, where, where, where do you guys, At, uh, and I can find you your, the reason I ask is I'll find you your uh, district representatives yeah, to connect to. Um, the encampment that uh, he went and met with, the people that's oh yes, okay. Um, so that's okay, gonna be that's District uh, thirty one. So is? yep, so that's Rep. Senator Shibley, um, that is uh, Representative Rohr, and that is Representative Schmidt. So you can um, go into either the House or Senate, ask to meet um, with uh, with representatives from District thirty one. Which would you like, recommend meeting with both the House and Senate? And what would you recommend speaking with the House differently than a senator? Like, um, I just I would just address them differently based on the senator or representative. Senator is more like state laws, and representatives more federal, right? Nope. Uh, here, they're both chambers work together to pass state laws. So any bill that would be passed by the House would need to be passed in identical form by the Senate. And that you, the bills could originate in either one, right? Correct. North Dakota has a slightly different rule where. Um, to get bills introduced during our legislative session only meets for four months every two years. Right. Um, and so now that we're out of the window, individual legislators, so I guess if, if you're asking for this particular session or mm -hmm. in the future. Well, it could be future. As soon as possible, it's future. Okay. Important. Well, so you can't, re the District 31 representatives that I just mentioned can no longer introduce bills right. because the deadline introduces passed. So you need to speak with uh, leadership. Minority, majority leadership. I'd recommend the majority, obviously, given the control of the chambers. Um, they, there's a there are some processes that can be utilized for next session and subsequent sessions. The best route is just to contact your district representative. Thank you. What, what's their name again? Just uh, um, it's uh, Representative Rohr, Representative Schmidt, uh, and a Senator Schein. We're the 65th Legislative Assembly, mm -hmm. um, and it'll break down, it'll provide contact information for all our representatives based on the, the district and the district that you're looking for is 31. Cool. Have you got a download from the governor yet with regards to how to meet with this morning? This morning? Uh, it sounds like it, it was very productive. The date, uh, you know, as, as far as the executive order still stands on the 22nd, but it was productive. I think all parties want to work together to expedite the cleanup process. Um, so from, from what we've heard is that there are uh, uh, additional resources being deployed in camp right now to assist with moving away trash and snow, put some gravel down to help with uh, people who are trying to get their cars up. Um, put some water on the What's that? Put some dirt or gravel on the Gravel, right. Yeah. What about the people? Um, what, what happens with the people? Because that, if, from what I understand, if you're here for 30 days or more, mm -hmm. you're technically considered a resident. You'd have to establish residency, which would require an address. So which you, that area doesn't have an address. And you need homeless to, people you know, also have rights, don't they? They, they absolutely do. So mm -hmm. most often they establish a post office box or... Um, homeless person with a post office box. Some do, others will get an affidavit to vote. So, so as it relates specifically to voting, you can have a signed affidavit where you go to the polls signifying that you are um, a, a resident at the, at the time of voting. But wow. the simple fact of being here doesn't qualify as residents? Or having been related related to what, I guess is my question. Yeah, representation. If I, when I go talk to these gentlemen, for yep. example, are they gonna ask me for my voter registration card? I you know, I, I can't speak to how about the governor? Can't speak the governor, if he talks for the people and right. represents the people, right. are we considered people also simply because we're there, or do we have to have that voter registration card to have? Well, there, there's no voter registration card. Oh, um, okay. But established residency to be a resident. Sure. Of North so if being there, we're homeless. We're basically, there's no address where we're located. I'll check your shirt Right. And so none of us have representation in, in, in this governor. Is that? 
Well, no, uh, the, the government certainly represents all of what's going on. Uh, the the Chattanooga Chap Chap camp is being closed, so people are planning to relocate to other areas in North Dakota. Um, I know that all North Dakotans deserve to be represented, but I know that that is not a long-term um, place of residence as it relates to private grazing land owned by the Army Corps. Um, and so if, if people are find themselves in other areas of the state, absolutely. Um, but obviously with the executive order signed by the governor earlier this week, um, people need to relocate themselves by next Wednesday. For people who are, oh, go ahead. If people are stranded there, uh, will the officers take that into consideration and help them? Because some of us do have to this way. I was going to ask about that. And yeah. specifically, if people want to leave the state, uh, yeah. so are there and resources? I, I can't speak to what, I, I know that there's some efforts being made between the state and the tribe to set up a relocation center where that's providing a bus ticket to get people back um, to car parts and stuff. Some people's Gas cars broke down and stuff. stuff like that. Yeah, like, like, I don't I, I can't speak to the full suite of resources yeah. that would be made available we at this time. It can be considered. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that that is something that's being worked on at, at this time. I they know, probably talked about that this morning. I know okay. that yeah, there's a, a location about a mile south of the cannonball. There's a, there's a parking lot this location that the DOT uses to park uh, plows and, yeah. and and I think that is the location that they're looking to get something set up. Whether or not it's been finalized or implemented yet, I can't speak to that. But I know there are several people who want to go home um, and are just looking for additional assistance, right? And and the governor has made it clear that he wants to provide, to the greatest extent possible, the means to allow people to, to leave the area because we recognize that some people are legitimately stranded. Thank you. Thanks. You're Levi? I am. Yeah. I'm Alex. Alex, yeah. pleasure to meet you. My name is Chiago. Chiago, wonderful to meet you. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. I, I actually grabbed one because I saw his Levi. Great. Yeah. Happy to help. <laughs> Thanks for talking to you. Well, thank, thank you both for your service. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's closed. It's closed. There's no session. Uh, maybe we can schedule an appointment. Should we go schedule an appointment with the representative? Or well, the this is the state legislature. They're usually up in their offices. Do you want to schedule Should we ask these people? Well, no, they're in their offices up above. There's oh, like should we go up there? 20 stories. Well, no, if you want to visit the, if you want to visit that other location, you should go yeah. Should we ask them about scheduling the point with the senator? Well, they wouldn't know. That would be up in their offices. Oh, okay. But we can look at it online. They're all online. Yeah. And they're well, really I don't get Well, that, that's what you call. Them. That's what you call. Them. Call them is better when you're talking about legislation. They're yeah. not going to receive and visits, you're right. But it has to be about Most of them are probably not even here anymore. Yeah. After legislature.